Hello, everybody. I'm actually early today. It's hard to believe that I'm early and I'm not late. I thought I was going to be late and I'm not. So exciting. Get this all set up. I was also worried it was going to rain and it is not raining, so that's nice. There we go. So what are you guys doing today? It's Friday. It's the weekend. Y'all have anything planned, fun? Oh, and that's a mosquito. I need to get um, bug spray. One sec. Grabbing bug spray. Okay. Yeah, let me know what you're working on. I had to get my coffee. And like I said, I have to spray my bug spray. Mosquitoes are out. Hello, hello, crocheting. Is that all you're doing all weekend is crocheting? I feel the same way. I, uh, I get to start on some new stuff. I get to share with you guys some uh, progress on some of my works in progress. Uh, but I'm going to give it just a minute. So yeah, this weekend, um, yesterday, we finished coding hooks for our next release. So we're really excited. I was going to bring some to show you guys, but I was a little worried that they just weren't cured enough for me to be handling them. Um, but I'm super excited because we used new glitter. So if you caught my live yesterday, uh, we got a whole bunch of new glitter. It's like 56 little vial things of glitter. Uh, so we used a new one, a new color, to coat these new hooks. So we're super, super excited about these new hooks, and we're going to be releasing them within the next probably week or so. So that's exciting. And then uh, this Sunday, we are going to be going live on YouTube to do our closing ceremony for the DIY hook challenge. So we're really excited about that. You'll get to see the captain. He'll be on there. Um, but we wanted to go live on YouTube because we did have some DIY hook challenge participants that do not have Instagram. So we wanted to make sure that everyone could join in for the festivities. Uh, and we do want to make it more than just about um, the grand prize winner. You know, we will have one grand prize winner who's going to win uh, a set of custom hooks from us. Uh, and that's going to be really exciting. But, um, I mean, we were blown away, you guys, by the amount of you know, just the creativity and people, uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't want to have to make that decision. Yeah, no, it's, it's, um, it's really difficult and we have broken it down to where, you know, we're going to have some runners up, runner ups, however you say that, <laughs> and, um, figuring out what kind of runner up prizes we want to give out. Um, but yeah, we're, we're really excited for, for that. And just to talk about, what that challenge really meant for us. And um, we definitely plan on doing the challenge again in the future. Um, we would love to make it an annual tradition in the summer. You know, that's kind of a downtime for a lot of us crocheters and makers. You know, we have a little bit more time. You can involve your kids. You know, that was what was really fun is there were a lot of people who involved their kids. They bought their kids a hook. Their kids got to play around and decorate hooks and submit their hooks. Um, and that's what we wanted. We didn't want this to be you know, we had a couple of people ask us for feedback on like, what exactly are you looking for? And you know, we wish we had more um, direction and we didn't want to give direction. And I don't think that that's going to change next year. We just wanted you guys to have fun. Like try something new, um, try a new medium of creativity, you know, buy some cool new paint, you know, just have fun. Um, and, you know, we saw some fails along the way, you know, even my hook, and that's what I meant to grab. I'm going to have it at the closing ceremony. I'll have the two hooks that I did and the, uh, the captain did a hook too. So we're going to show those off um, at the closing ceremony and show you guys kind of what we did. But, you know, I painted really pretty little flowers all over my hook with Sharpies. And I guess I used too much Sharpie. So I went over that hook like three or four times with Sharpies to really like darken the lines. And I think because I used so much Sharpie that when I went to go resin coat it, it did start to kind of smear and run together. 
but I'm still proud of it, you know, exactly. Uh, you know, even if it failed, it's still usable. I'm gonna be able to use that hook forever. It, uh, you know, I'm, I'm super excited about that. Um, but it was about the process. It was all about the process. Um, and we just enjoyed that so much. You know, we had 85 hooks purchased. Now, some people bought multiple hooks. You know, some people bought practice hooks. They bought hooks for multiple entries because we did not say anything about you know, not being able to have multiple entries if people wanted to decorate more than one hook. Like I said, some people had their kids get involved or family members. We had some sisters getting involved. So um, I think we ended up with 45 actual entries into the final challenge. So you can go to my website, uh, therealpinksheepdesign.com and click uh, over the hooks, crochet hooks, and there's a drop down and there's a DIY hook challenge web page on my website and you can see the gallery of all the hooks that were submitted um, now a lot of those hooks had like video submissions too uh, but I had to limit what I could put on the website so there's one photo of every single hook that was submitted so you guys can go check those out if you want to like I said the real pink sheep design .com, and then you go to the crochet hooks tab drop down DIY hook challenge um, and check out all the cool hooks that people submitted um, so that was new. Um, mine was awful, but at least I have a chunky hook to use. Yes. And like I said, that was, we just wanted you guys to submit them, you know? I mean, even if it wasn't perfect, like just that follow through of like you accepted the challenge and you submitted your hook and we just loved it. We loved getting to see everyone's hooks. Um, and we can't wait to do it next year. And I'm pretty sure our plan is is to send you guys a different hook every year. So that way every year you can decorate a new hook uh, of a new size and um, you'll start to have your own collection of um, your own collection of DIY hooks. So every year you'll have a new hook. Um, good morning, Polka Dot Fox. Um, but yes, yeah, so that, that's what that's our goal. Um, so next year we'll probably go up to a 19 and then a 20 and then a 25, you know, and maybe we'll do um, some smaller hooks or in between sizes just so that you guys have that range and that collection. And I think the larger the hooks get, it'll be even easier um, because the 19 and 20 do not have the ergonomic handle. Uh, and so it'll be easier to like shape around that because there is no, you know, increase or decrease in the little handle size. So that might actually be a little easier. Um, so really excited. Like I said, this uh, this Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So we're doing it a little bit later for our friends on the West Coast. I know that's not super late, um, but it's better than 12 at 12 uh, 12 p.m. Eastern time. Um, you can actually go to my YouTube channel, um, and I believe there is a link. I'll put it in my bio too. But you can actually click to get a reminder when we actually go live. So you can go to my YouTube channel and look at my um, scheduled live sessions and you can get a reminder for when we go live. Um, so that'll be really fun and that'll be over on YouTube. So uh, excited about that. So that's one of the things happening this weekend. I have to get all of our hooks, co our, our hooks photographed because we just got done, um, we just got done coding the next release of hooks. So I have to get those photographed and get the Etsy listings ready. Um, what else? The Babe with the Yarn Bag is live. That was yesterday. I'm gonna post a reel uh, for that one today just because I had pre-planned and I had taken some video when I first finished the bag, so I'm gonna make a little reel. But that's live in my Etsy shop. It's fantastic tote bag. Everybody did so good. The testers were amazing. Uh, and I just love that that one worked out and turned out as good as it did. And I was looking for a large tote bag. I love big tote bags. Um, I'm actually thinking about doing a YouTube video on how to turn um, bath rug, like bath rugs uh, and other kinds of rugs into large tote bags with straps. And I think that because I've made a few um, like rug bags and they're really easy to make, but I need to do a little tutorial for you guys because I feel like that would be really cool to have a rug bag tutorial. Um, if you guys are joining in, this is my crochet and chat Friday. I haven't grabbed my crochet stuff yet, but I have tons of stuff to share with you guys. Um, we have some new things. I got some new yarn that I'm going to show you guys. Um, I'm excited for that color of hook, the new ones. I know because I haven't really shared it with anybody yet. 
Uh, not on here. Uh, you may have gotten a sneak peek if you joined in on some of our random lives or um, the captain's random lives. He may have pictures on his uh, Instagram feed. He always gives it away a little early. Um, so if you're following him, you get the sneak peeks. Um, but yeah, lots to share. Um, hit the hearts if you can. That tells Instagram that this is a great uh, a great video that people might wanna, wanna check in on. Um, so the hearts always helps. So if you wanna send me some hearts, that would be awesome. Um, if you're enjoying the video, you know. Um, I have finally started drinking iced coffee. Um, I don't know if you guys like iced coffee. Let me know in the comments if you like iced coffee. I kind of forget about it. Um, and then I forget to drink water because I'm drinking iced coffee. So, um, and there's not even ice in here. It was just cold coffee. So, um, drinking my iced coffee and it's not too hot out today, which is great. I'm not sweating. I have to take my sweatshirt off. But, um, okay, so what do I want to share with you guys today? Um, I have some new yarn from, okay, so here's, real quick, um, I guess I have been pronouncing hobby yarn wrong. I said hobby, like as in hobby, H-O-B-B-Y, because it's like a play on words, I thought, you know, so, um, but I guess it's pronounced hobby. Um, but if I'm wrong, I don't want to be right, so I'm going to keep calling it hobby, because, you know, that's just how it goes. Uh, and I don't know if any of you guys, um, when I was reading the Harry Potter books, so I started reading them when I was little. Uh, I, I read them when they came out. And, you know, this was before there were movies to tell you how to pronounce things. And so I read all of those books pronouncing Hermione as like Hermione in my head. <laughs> so... But that one, I, I decided, okay, I need, to, I need to pronounce it right once I found out how you're supposed to pronounce her name. Um, but Hobby Yarn has some new jumbo yarn. Uh, so when they contacted me, I'm one of their influencer partner people, so I get alerted when they have opportunities for me to try out new yarn for them and share it with you guys. And that's really only ever gonna happen if they're doing jumbo yarn, so super chunky yarn. Um, Ellen, did you, pr you pronounce Hermione's name wrong too, or Hobby? Let me know which one, because if it's Hermione, that's, that's hilarious. Um, but yes, yeah, so they sent me that they have a new super bulky yarn, so I'm really excited to share this with you guys. It reminds me a lot of Woolies Thick and Quick, that style of yarn, or like Michael's Loops and Threads Cozy Wool. Um, I think Joann's has their own version, like the Big Twist Wool, or something like that. Um... But they reached out and I only accept if it's a super bulky yarn. Uh, and so this time I accepted, I'm gonna create one of my fall cardigans this year. I'm gonna be doing a new cardigan pattern. Um, and so I'm gonna share this with you guys. So this is Hobby Umani, or Umani. Probably saying that wrong too, since I say Hobby wrong. <laughs> um, but this is a 78% acrylic, 22% wool blend. But you can see the twist. I mean, to me, it looks extremely similar to um, Woolies Thick and Quick, Cozy Wool by Michaels, um, Joann's Big Twist uh, wool. So, uh, but it has, and it has a similar wool content because I believe that Woolies Thick and Quick is 20% wool and this one's 22 whereas Michael's Loops and Threads Cozy Wool is like 50-50. So it's a 50% wool, 50% acrylic, and I don't know the Joann's because I don't have a Joann's near me, so I'm not one of those people that shops there often. Um, I need to start purchasing from them online just to try out some of their yarn. But this is the first color. It's like a mustard color. Um, oh, and I realized, yeah, they don't actually have the, the color. They just have its color number 20 on here. Um, but that's like this really pretty mustard color. And then the next color that I got, which I thought this one was going to be a little brighter. It's really just like a brown, which is not really my thing, but I was going for those fall colors and they didn't have a ton of options in this one. So I don't know if they're waiting to see how popular it is, if they're going to add colors. Um, but this is their color number 19. So it's like a, like a, like a golden brown, I guess you could say. Um, and then the last color, because I'm going to do a tricolor cardigan, 
um, is this like rust color. So this is the new Hobby Umani uh, Super Bulky Size 6 uh, Wool Blend, 78% acrylic, 22% wool. Um, but these are the colors that I'm going to do for my cardigan. There you go. So I think this will be really pretty. So that'll be my fall cardigan. Um, I still have to figure out exactly what I'm going to do with it because I didn't buy as much as I meant to. Uh, I, I feel like I meant to, to ask for more yarn because as I'm looking at the yardage, I really wanted to do a long fall cardigan, like longer. You know, most of my cardigans are um, like a cropped or just like they hit the hips. And I don't know if that's gonna happen with these. So I may have to do two cardigans this fall. I may need to, or maybe that'll be a pullover. I did wanna do another pullover that's similar to the Weasley sweater, um, but I want my fall collection this year to be single crochet only. So that's gonna really challenge me to just use that single stitch because I tend to, um, I tend to use half double crochets very, very, very heavily. Um, half double crochet stitches and so I wanted to challenge myself this year and try to do an entire collection of single crochet um, garments. So um, I'm going to use those to create maybe the pullover and then I want to create a longer cardigan maybe with some pockets. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be hooded or not. I haven't decided. Maybe I'll do another hoodie. Um, I think it might be kind of cool to do a more fitted hoodie. So the Tonks hoodie was really more of an oversized hippie-esque um, hoodie, but maybe I can do um, a more fitted, like the Weasley sweater, but a hoodie. So that might be kind of cool. Uh, I need to play around with that idea. Um, and maybe mix up the Weasley and the Ginny, because the Ginny sweater has the ribbed, uh, the ribbed waistband. So then I could do a pocket and then do a hood and have an option for like, you know, three quarter length sleeves or long sleeves or something, I don't know. Um, but I have a lot of planning to do for that. Um, okay, so what am I actually working on now? Let's see, okay, I have made progress on my crop top, you guys. <laughs> um, I know every time I come on here, I say that I'm like back to square one and I haven't made any progress, but I have made progress and I'm gonna be working on some videos um, to go along with this crop top as well because it's not, it's, you know, I mean, crop tops are always going to be a little bit harder uh, to explain for myself in patterns and just photos. So I'm going to do a couple of videos for this one. Um, but let me show you what I have. Okay. And I know it's still not like crazy progress, but hey, it's something. Okay. So this is what I've got. So we are going to have a thicker strap on this cardigan. So I'm really excited about that. And then this is the cup. So it's going to be really hard for me to, let me just do this. There we go. Mm -hmm. So the larger sizes will have a longer band. The band will come down longer. This cup portion will be wider and taller for the larger sizes because this is not a full cup. Uh, the cup actually starts down here on the band, you know, so this stretches to fit, fit the girls. Uh, and then this side I haven't started. I've started working my way from this edge back and I'm gonna create the second one of these. And then for this, for the smaller sizes, there will be one like triangle here, like all my other crop tops. If you guys have ever done my everyday crop top or my Rachel, um, I create a little triangle here um, and then a little hole at the end. And this strap, you can see it kind of comes to a point here at the top. Uh, so I'm going to make a border that will go all the way around and then from the tip I'm going to do a chain and I'm going to slip stitch back down the chain and I'll make the chain long enough to cross over through that triangle. So at the end of the triangle there will be a little hole and you'll go through that and it will create like the crisscross corset. For the larger sizes I thought it might be nice to do um, because if you go all the way up like let's say 3, 4x you know, it's gonna almost be double. So you're gonna have like double the length here. Um, so I think I'm gonna do two triangles, okay? So you'd have a triangle here, and then you'd have a triangle here, and then you'd have two holes. So it would be like a double crisscross, okay? And I think that'll help with like the corseting and the fitting around. 
um, and to make it feel a little more fitted. So we'll see what happens, but I think that this nice band will be good. I haven't seen a lot of crop tops that do that, um, but the band is meant to arc over the shoulder. Uh, and then once you go over your shoulder, that's when you start the smaller strap that, that does the actual crossing and tying, because that would be hard to tie, you know. Um, and then this strap will get a little wider for each larger size. So I think the extra small, small, it's this big. And then I add two more stitches for the medium large, and then another two stitches for the XL and up. Um, so you'd actually have seven stitches across for the band. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'm getting there. I'm working on it. I've got the notes going. I'm starting to take some videos. Um, it'll probably be like a transitional fall piece for you to wear layered under your stuff if I do release it this year. Um, and this is, somebody asked me, oh, Ellen, this is um, Bernat Maker. So this is the home deck, the home deck yarn. It's a size five. Um, so if you know that you're going to want to test this crop top for me, wink, wink. Uh, get yourself some home deck yarn. Um, there's not a ton of colors, but there's like some pretty yellows and teal and a couple of these variegated colors. You can get it on Amazon. Um, you can get it straight from like Yarnspirations, I think is who owns Burnett Maker. Um, but check these out because it's super soft. It's a cotton nylon mix, I believe. So it's meant for like home decor projects, but it has a lot of structure, which I really, really like for bralettes um, because the regular cotton yarn tends to um, stretch out or just feel a little stiff. Um, and to me, like I like this stuff for, for bralettes. So um, that's what I chose to use for this one. Plus it's a size five, so it's a little more on brand than like a size four. Um, and I'm using a five and a half millimeter hook. So I crochet pretty tightly, so some people might have to size down and use like a 4.5 or a 5 millimeter hook, maybe. Um, okay, so that's my progress on the crop top. I had a lot to share this this uh, this week. And my progress on, okay, so I told you guys last week that I was working on a craft show bundle of patterns. And... I am working on a video for my super chunky cowl. So uh, this is two strands of woolies thick and quick held together, half double crochet in the back loop only. Um, I increase throughout so that the cowl has like a nice shape um, when you put it on. But I actually made a video tutorial for this as soon as COVID hit um, and we went into lockdown and all that. Um, I made a tutorial, but I've learned so much since making that first tutorial, and I have a better equipment set up. Um, my video tutorials look a lot better because I can really get that top-down look. So I'm redoing that, um, redoing that video right now so that this will be a pattern and a video, and that'll be on my YouTube channel. Um, and just in case you guys, if you're watching and you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. I'm going to be releasing my first ever... Um, well, not my first ever, because I do have this one on there, this old tutorial, but um, my first new free video tutorial on how to make my Sneaky Buns bucket hat um, when I hit 500 subscribers. And I think that I'm at like 420 or 418 or something like that. So uh, my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash pink sheep design. Um, so check it out, subscribe if you'd like to, because um, I'm really excited to start bringing some more free patterns in the mix. Um, and I'm working on a learn to crochet playlist. So that playlist will have how to chain, how to single crochet, how to half double crochet, uh, how to crochet in the back loop only, double crochet, crochet in the round, how to use stitch markers, like all of those fun things. And I, I think I have filmed and edited six videos for that series so far. And uh, I wanna release them all at once because that brings me to my next thing that I wanna share with you guys, um, which is a learn to crochet kit. So most of you guys watching this probably don't need a learn to crochet kit, but I figure that it'll be great for my Etsy shop if you have friends and family that you want to learn how to crochet, um, you know, or for people who just find me on Etsy and, and are looking for that kind of crafty kit kind of thing for like the holidays. So I have it all ready to go. I got it photographed yesterday. It's very simple. 
um, but that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted something simple where you get this kit, it's everything you need, then you can go to my YouTube channel and you can follow through the Learn to Crochet playlist and learn all the basics. So that was the goal because I didn't want to have to like write a book or take pictures and create like a document um, and then have to print it out and send it out. But I was going to show you guys, and I think I need a little bit bigger of box. Um, these were the boxes we bought for our hook boxes. But so this is like the unboxing of what it would look like if someone bought my Learn to Crochet kit. So if I open this up, and of course I had to have my pink and orange. If you've never purchased like a hook or something large from me, um, this is what all of my packages look like. I have my pink and orange tissue paper. Okay. So when you open it, you'll get a card. And I just got these from Vistaprint and I'm in love. I think they turned out great. So this says, hello there friend. Welcome to the Pink Sheep Squad and thank you for your support. I hope you enjoy your new project and have an amazing day. So that's the card. And then on the back of the card, it tells them what kit they bought, which in this case would be the Learn to Crochet kit. I'll tell them the hook size that I included. I'll tell them the yarn that I included in case they want to buy more of the same yarn um, with additional notes. So then, let's open this up. Here you go. They get a skein of yarn. It'll either be wool -y, Stick and Quick or wool -y, or um, Hometown USA, depending on if they have like, oh, you know, a version to wool. Um, this one's a wool blend, and then I'll have a version where they can purchase 100% acrylic. They'll get one of these simple Susan Bates hooks, just because our hooks are too pricey, I feel like, for a, a learn to crochet kit. Um, I wanted to keep the costs down a little bit for those, so these are just plastic Susan Bates hooks that I was able to purchase in bulk. Um, and then they're going to get some stitch markers and a tapestry needle. So you guys can see the tapestry needle. This is actually one of our flexi needles. Um, but that's it. So they've got their hook, they've got their yarn, they've got stitch markers, and they've got a tapestry needle. And they'll be able to learn how to chain, single crochet, all the different basic stitches, how to weave in ends with their tapestry needle, and how to use their stitch markers. So really excited about that. Like I said, it's super simple, I know, um, but I do, I want it to be, you know, I, I want to have a little experience of, you know, the tissue paper and having this extra little kit of stuff and then having the card. Um, you know, I feel like those little additions will make it feel a little bit more like it's not just yarn in a bag, <laughs> you know? So that's my hope. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think, if you think it's a good idea. Um, if you think there's something I could add to it that would give it more value or if you think it's good as is. Um, because that's always my worry. I want people to feel, I don't want people to feel gypped. I want people to feel like they really got something valuable. Um, and like I said, I feel like my videos are pretty good uh, now that I've figured my setup out. Um, I'm doing it on my professional camera, not my phone, so they're very clear. Um, so we'll see what happens, but that's next. So I've been photographing that and um, getting all those videos ready. Uh, I have some videos to film today. Um, and then I have one more thing to share with you guys before I just chat a little bit with you all. Um, I have a surprise color. I'm not sharing our newest, our newest release, but I wanted to share um, another color that we're gonna do. Um, and we have some tools that are gonna be ready in this new color. So, presenting mint green. So this is one of our lucets. And this is one of our gauge tools in this mint green color. So we're trying to figure out now um, what all can we get out of one roll of filament. So when we put a new filament roll on, we have a certain amount of hooks that we print. Um, a lot of it is planned based on um, the hook sizes that are that are selling the most, which a lot of times right now is like the smaller hook sizes. So I'm hoping during the fall and winter months that we'll sell more of our larger hook sizes as people work with more of the chunkier jumbo yarn. Um, but we have kind of a plan of how many hooks of each size to make with one roll of filament. But then we always have more filament left over. So we're now kind of doing some experimenting to figure out how many tools, how many different types of tools 
can we get out of that filament so that when we do a hook release, we also do a release of new tool colors. So like if you wanted to buy a hook, but you wanted matching gauge squares or lucets or wraps per inch tools or um, stitch markers or um, yarn bobbins, you know, we will be able to like release all those at the same time. So that's what we're looking at. But we, I thought these were really pretty. And like I said, these were sitting on the counter in there by our printer. So I wanted to share them with you guys. So I can actually start working on if I actually, I don't even know if I brought the right hook size down here to work on that. And I don't think I did. Oh, well that's okay. That's cool. We can still just chat. I never get enough done anyway when I try to crochet and talk at the same time. So I wanted to talk a little bit. Um, this was actually, I don't know if Julie is on here, but um, over on my Facebook group, she had mentioned, and if you guys like Facebook, you like Facebook groups, you can always join my Facebook group. I'm, uh, you, I think you can just search Pink Sheep Design and the group should come up. Um, but she had asked me about like balance and how I balance things. Um, now that I work full time doing the Pink Sheep, it is different. Um, you know, when I worked full time for my full time job, things were a little easier because I kind of knew, okay, this is what I have to do for my full time job. And then any extra time that I have is going to be spent, um, you know, doing stuff for pink sheep, you know, whether that's designing crochet patterns or designing new stickers or new merchandise or things like that. Um, but now that I work full time, it, it is a little crazy. It is a little difficult to try to figure out the balance, you know, because you don't want to overwork yourself, but then you feel like, you almost feel like you always have to be working, you know, because if, if you are the sole reason whether or not you're going to make any money, it, it's easy to pressure yourself to work harder and do more things. And, <clears throat> you know, the captain and I had this conversation over the last couple of days because there have been a few moments where I got really fr frazzled. Um, I love that word. Uh, and a lot of it's just, you know, I try to plan things out in, in a way that's going to help me stay focused and not forget about things because there is a lot to do, you know, um, just keeping Etsy updated. Um, you know, when I release a pattern, there are so many elements that go into that. You know, once I get the pattern written and sent out to testers, I have some time to breathe for a little while, but then once the feedback starts coming back in, it kind of turns into a mad rush for me because I want to get the pattern released. And you have that feeling of like, I need to get past this pattern. You know, now that I've gotten all the feedback and I know that it's good to go, I want to get it out. And, you know, so I have a lot of testers. Um, you know, that's really a personal choice. There are a lot of people who may only use five or six pattern testers if you don't have different sizes. And then if you have different sizes, you might have one or two testers for each size. Um, but for an, as an example, my tote bag that I just released, I have like 25 testers. That's a lot. <laughs> um, and it's not, it's not that I'm trying to, to take on more than I can handle. It's just that, you know, my testing group, this amazing group of people has really turned into part of my team. Like they're part of my team as, as Pink Sheep. And um, when they get excited about a pattern, I don't wanna tell them no. You know, if they're a return tester and they wanna come back and test for me again, I mean, I'm thrilled. I, I want as many people that, that wanna test for me that are in, you know, already in my group, I already trust and know that they're gonna send in all of their notes on time. Um, it'd be different. Like I would never have 26 new testers. Um, but I always ask my returning testers first if they want to test it out. And then I might bring on one or two newbies to the group, um, just to make sure, you know, you've probably heard this before. If you design patterns, um, you don't want to only use your returning testers and not bring on anyone new because they get so used to your style of writing that they may end up skipping over things and not catching errors or you know problems with the stitch count because they're used to how you write. So you do want to bring in some new people. Um, but the other thing is if I have 26 people that are testing for me, that means I have 26 people on Instagram 
building up that suspense, sharing their progress, um, getting people excited about the pattern. And, you know, for me, that's, I couldn't ask for anything better than having them help me market and help me build the buzz. Um, and so that's why, you know, that's why. But it is a lot because then I have 26 emails that come in with feedback. Um, that means I need to go through all of their feedback and make sure that I don't miss anything. You know, if, if different people caught different errors or um, had feedback about the pattern, um, I try to be really open to the, the feedback about the pattern, not about grammar, but just like, you know, what if you added this or what if you added a note about this, you know, and I really try to incorporate that if I, if I feel like, especially if I hear it from more than one person, I'll try to incorporate that into the pattern. And then you have 26 people sending you photos. So I have to make sure that I download all of those photos, categorize them. I actually save each file with the Instagram handle of the tester. Um, and that way, when I go to share the photos, I can go to that file. Because it's really difficult for me to remember everybody's Instagram handle. I might remember their name and not their handle or vice versa. So um, getting all of that put into my files and then I have to make graphics for Etsy because I like to showcase all of my testers photos on my Etsy listing. So, you know, you only have 10 photos on Etsy. So I have to make like little grids with like four photos to a photo. Uh, and then I do the same thing for Etsy. I mean, for Instagram. So I'll have like a different size graphic with the four images and I'll plug and play and try, I try to make sure that if if the testers got their images in by the deadline, then I try to make sure that they're included in my Instagram post and in my Etsy listing. And then I also started adding all of my testers' images, or at least the majority of them, uh, to my patterns, which has been a little crazy, but I feel like it's great for people who purchase the pattern and just want a little inspiration. Like what have, what have other people done with this pattern to get creative? Because most of my patterns don't have instructions for color changes or anything. Like you could make a plain color or you can color change when you want to. Um, so I might put some notes in there of like, this is where I chose to change colors, but you don't have to do that. You know, you could make it super striped or you could just make a solid color. Um, so, where I was going with that is just, you know, even just releasing a pattern, there are so many things that you have to remember um, to get that pattern to rele the release day. Um, you may have to compress the PDF file because Etsy only, you know, allows a certain size file and I use a lot of photos. Um, and then, you know, I might want to send out an email. Uh, I might want to make sure that I mention it somewhere, you know, did I post about it on Facebook? Have I added it to Ravelry? Um, and so I've tried to start creating some of these checklists to make it easier to not forget things. But the problem is when I start creating checklists, then you feel bound. You feel bound by, uh, hi Mickey. Um, you feel bound by those items and you, it, depending on your personality, it may cause you anxiety if you aren't getting through those lists. Um, and that's what me and the captain had to talk about because I would start to get flustered and frustrated because I had all these things that I felt like needed to be checked off. Um, but you know, life throws stuff at you and you have other things that come up and you have to figure out how to, you know, pivot and reprioritize and what are some of the things that can be put off and, you know, learning how to be okay with putting those things off uh, and not letting it make you feel like you failed or um, that you, you know, God forbid, aren't going to make enough money, you know, or something like that. You know, you never know what those negatives are going to be in your head. Um, and so I feel like finding that balance, I haven't found balance, but it's a work in progress, you know, and that's why I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, you know, some semblance of a list is good for me because like I said, I'm, I can be very forgetful because there are so many things that I want to do and want to work on. Um, so having things written down somewhere, uh, is good, but I have to make sure that I don't write things down in a million places, you know, and I have a checklist here and then I have my planner and then I have the checklist on my phone, you know. Um, 
So I'm trying to learn how to kind of consolidate so that I'm not running myself around in circles with, you know, where did I put that list? Um, and let's see. But I feel like I've gotten a good handle on, you know, setting goals that are, because that's the other thing is setting goals. So you may have your tasks, you know, that you need to do throughout the week and throughout the month. Um, but you also have like your larger goals and what those have turned into for me have been um, every month, so once a month, and this is like soft goals because again, I have to make sure that I don't feel defeated or like a failure or anything if I don't reach those. Because I know like this is just this is just a goal. This is what I would like to see happen, but it's okay if it doesn't, you know. And you have to tell yourself that. Um, but my goals for the business are to. Um, every month have a new hook release, which so far we've been able to do. Um, every month we've been able to release a new color, a uh, new color and set of hooks. And that has grown. You know, we started off only offering 16 millimeter hooks. That was it, you know. And then we started adding sizes and now we've got the full spectrum almost from 10 millimeter to 25 millimeter with every single release in a different color. We have not um, revisited anything except um, rainbow silk filament. I think we did two releases because that was so popular. So you'll probably see that one again at some point. But, um, you know, we've done new colors and new sizes and, you know, that has been pretty much monthly. So, so that we were like, okay, we've already been doing it, so it can be a goal. You know, it can be a goal to release a new color every month of hooks. Um, the other goal for me is to try to release a pattern every month. So one new pattern every month. Um, and looking back, you know, I made these goals after looking back at the past like five or six months to kind of see, okay, what have I already been doing without planning it out? So um, it turns out that I was successfully releasing actually one to two patterns every single month um, for the past five to six months. Um, ever since COVID, you know, um, I just hit the ground running with pattern, you know, I took that time that I would have spent commuting to an office, which was anywhere from three to four hours a day into the business and, and, you know, working on new patterns and new designs, um, you know, working on new sticker designs and stuff like that. So that's my second goal, second monthly goal. And then my third monthly goal is actually to create a new merchandise design every month. So that one's actually really fun. Um, I created a community, I created a Discord server. Um, if you test for me, you know about this because this Discord server was created when I realized that I had outgrown Instagram chats for my testers. So when I first started testing patterns, um, I would send out the email with the pattern and just wait until the testers emailed me back. There was no real community. There was no real opportunity. There was no group for the testers to um, connect with each other. And it wasn't until trying to think maybe the Trelawney cardigan, that might have been the first test group that I created on Instagram. So at that point, um, Instagram chat, you can have up to 30 people in a chat. So it was kind of perfect because I'd never had more than 30 testers. So um, I just started creating little IG chat groups for my testers for each pattern. And then I would leave the test groups open. I didn't close them down after the patterns closed. And so people could really connect and I could, I could um, encourage it. I could tell people like, hey, go follow all of your you know fellow testers if you want to. Um, Let's share what yarn we're using. Let's share our progress in this chat group. Uh, and that really was like, that was the game changer for me for turning pattern testers into just patterns into a community of people who, you know, were excited about things and who connected with each other and made new friends. Um, and so it wasn't until my overalls pattern, so the Romping Willow overalls changed the game <laughs> again. Um, I accidentally, you know, cause I had a lot of people who wanted to test that pattern. 
That's probably, that probably set my record for the amount of people who applied to test a pattern. And I had already done a pre-test with my, some of my returning testers. I did kind of like a crochet along style test to really figure out how to make the overalls fit different sizes before I actually wrote the entire pattern up and sent it out to a test group. So I think I had 40, 45 people, if not more, um, sign up to test my overalls. And of course, there's no way. There's no way that I, I could handle 45 testers. Um, and I had started using a Google form for my testers to apply. So I had all of their names written out. Uh, I went through and made sure that I had somebody for every single size. And then I went through and I hid the columns of the people that I was like, I just can't accept them for this particular test. And so I went to go send out the email to all of the overalls testers. And I didn't realize that if you hide columns in Google Drive and then you hold down and you scroll down and like copy a whole bunch of cells in, in the um, sheet, it includes everyone you've hidden. <laughs> so I sent an email out to 45 people telling them that they had been accepted to test my overalls pattern. So needless to say, um, I didn't want to go back through and revoke it because I just felt bad. I was like, you know, what the hell? I'll figure it out. <laughs> you know, I'll figure out what I'm going to do. And so, uh, yeah, I, I realized at that point there was no way I could keep doing Instagram chat because I was going to need two chat groups for the overalls. Um, which at the time, that's what I did. I created two separate chat groups because I, I had to split it up. I had too many people for one. Um, and that still went fine. But after that pattern, uh, I remember talking to the captain and a couple of other people and saying how, you know, I was still working full time for PPA and we used an app called Slack for work and for communicating remotely. And you had all these different channels for different, you know, topics and projects and um, it just made life really easy, and I said, gosh, I wish there was an option like Slack that was free. And that's when the captain was like, you need to look at Discord. And so Discord, if you guys haven't heard of Discord, it's more of like a gaming option, like a gaming server where you have all the different channels and you can talk about different things, and it's free. Uh, so I started a Discord, and that is actually now where I do all of my tests. And the community stays open to all of my testers. So if you test for me once, you're in the Discord group forever if you want to be. You know, I don't kick anyone out. I don't, um, you know, I, and so far I've been really lucky that the group of people that are in the Discord are just fantastic. I mean, they, they're they respectful of each other. They, um, we don't have drama. I don't have to set up, you know, all these crazy rules at this point. You know, people just do a good job kind of taking care of the conversations themselves and you know we have channels for more than just tests you know we talk about food and we talk about games and we have little game nights and things like that and it's just really turned into a great little community um so you know there are, are things like that where like as you grow you look for these tools and that that has really helped to keep me organized um, but Discord was a big game changer for that. So if, you know, if you're someone who designs patterns or wants to design patterns, that's something to look into, you know, um, or just if you want a little community that's not on Facebook, you know, I have a Facebook group, but I know that not everybody's on Facebook, just like not everybody's on Instagram, you know? Um, let me see. I haven't even checked the time. Oh, I've still got time. Um, but yeah, I'm, I thank you guys again for joining in. Um, if you're just joining in, this is my crochet and chat live on Fridays. And I forgot to bring my hook, so I'm not crocheting. But um, I had been asked a while back to talk a little bit about how I stay organized and balanced. And um, and I'd love to know if there's things that you guys do, um, you know, to stay organized and to, to, to balance your time. And, you know, if you crochet on the side, if there's ways that you make sure that you have enough time, you know, for you to crochet or design outside of your full-time job um, or if you do it full-time if you crochet and craft and make and and that's your full-time job I would love to know um, and I am gonna repost this I always repost these lives so if you you know want to come back in and check it out later um, and hello to everyone who's watching the replay um, 
but yeah, so uh, what else? Let's see. Um, I talked about lists and I talked about goals. Um, oh, and I didn't, so that's what I was talking about. I was talking about my three goals. So my three goals right now for the month are new hooks, new color of hooks every month, um, which is now turning into also new colors of tools every month. And then, uh, let's see, new pattern once a month, which this month I released the tote bag. And I may actually release two patterns this month. We'll see because the Sneaky Buns hat is almost ready. So that might be released in the next couple of weeks. Um, and I need to start on my next ones because I need that craft show bundle needs to get done. Uh, so I think today I'm gonna be working on filming the last part of the um, Chunky Cowl tutorial, which will then allow me to write up the pattern um, and have the video to go along with it. And then I'll have to do a call for testers. So if you wanna test my Chunky Cowl, um, and then I'm also gonna do a headband pattern. So super, super simple headband pattern, but it was my go-to for craft shows because it was so simple and it was so quick that I could make like 20 or 30 of those suckers before a craft show, which was the point of the bundle. I wanted it to be all of the things that I made for craft shows because they were really fast to make and people really liked them. So they sold really well too. So it's like the perfect combo. So my third goal uh, for Pink Sheep in a month uh, is now to create a new design. So a new merchandise design. So you guys have seen my wonderful not safe for work design. Uh, that was one of my first ones. And uh, those are all available in my bonfire shop, which uh, if you use the link in my bio and you choose shop maker apparel, um, I think I have like 10 or 12 designs now of just like different fun crochet and knitting designs. Um, but I want to do once a month. Once a month, I want to release a new design on apparel and coffee mugs and fun stuff like that. Um, and actually, since you're watching this video, I can tell you guys that next week I will be releasing a new design. So this new design, um, really excited about it. I did a little pre-order with some of my testers, so they'll be able to help me promote the design. Um, but it's gonna come on all my apparel, so like tank tops and hoodies and t-shirts and stuff like that. It'll have a sticker. It will have a notebook, which is totally new. I have not done a notebook yet. Um, and so I'm really excited to have a little notebook that you can use as like a project notebook or a little journal or whatever you wanna use it for. But it'll have a notebook, it'll have a coffee mug, it'll have a tote bag. Um, and I think that's everything, but all of those designs will go live next week. So I think it's gonna be next Tuesday. I need to double check. Um, either Tuesday or Thursday, uh, we'll go. it'll go live. So you'll be able to check out the new design. And for that, you know, again, talking about goals and like setting yourself up to reach goals. Um, this is one, this new design goal, you know, a new design every month. That one has been a little bit easier, at least right now, for me to plan ahead. So I actually have my new designs planned out through uh, November. So I have the design plan that's going out next week. Obviously, that's all set up and ready. And then in October, uh, I may be releasing, well, it's August, so September. September, I'm going to re be releasing Halloween designs. So I'm going to have some really fun crochet Halloween theme designs um, and I think that there's going to be three total designs because I wanted to do a couple of stickers and maybe do like a sticker pack for Halloween like maybe smaller stickers but you'll get a pack of them um, so I want to do Halloween uh, designs in September and then in October um, and I don't know if you guys know in October it's October 10th is mental health awareness day and I have a design just for that day so I'm going to release in October, um, and I, like I said, I wanted to release Halloween stuff in September so you have time to order it before Halloween. Um, so in October, I'm gonna release a design inspired um, for, inspired by, you know, mental health awareness and, you know, the fact that crafting is such a huge way to help with stress and anxiety and depression and going through difficult times in your life. And so um, there will be a design released on Mental Health Awareness Day um, that that was the inspiration for that one. So that one will be then. And then I have one more that's ready uh, that I'm going to release in um, November. So I have those planned out. And that was really my goal is like 
I know that if I'm creating designs, I can sit down with my iPad and I can plan ahead and I can make a whole bunch of different designs um, and just have them saved. The hardest part is not releasing them immediately. So, you know, once you create something cool or you take a cool picture or, um, you know, you design something new and you don't want to post you know, five times in a day because you did five new things, you know, you have to hold on to that content and say, I'm going to need this in a couple of days when I don't have anything to post about. Or in my case, I don't want to release a new design three weeks in a row. And then I feel um, like I've hit a creative block, if that makes sense, you know, so I'm trying to create when I feel creative and then save those designs um, to release later uh, when maybe I'm not going to feel so creative, you know. Um, I don't want the month before a release, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to release as a design, and that's for patterns too. Um, and that's where I think I'll probably struggle the most with, if I struggle with it, um, it will probably be with patterns. Um, because sometimes it's hard, you know, you'll lose your motivation or your inspiration you don't you know don't have an idea for a new pattern um, and you don't want to put something out there that sucks you know you want it to be something that people are actually going to like and um, I was a little worried about my tote bag you know because I didn't know how it was going to turn out I was just having to kind of wing it but it turned out that it you know it turned out really good and I was really happy with it and um, I know that I'm going to have one more tote bag pattern that's that's going to come out for fall um, and I believe it's going to be one that it's like you can use it either as a basket or a tote bag. Um, I used to make these for craft shows and um, they sold really well. And I never wrote the pattern, but I have lots of pictures of the ones that I used to sell. So I figure I can just use those pictures. I'm gonna go off of what I remember and I'm gonna write up a pattern for um, like a tote bag slash basket. So you can use it as a basket in your house or you can actually have it as a tote bag. Um, so excited about that one. Um, but that's really my plans for fall, uh, and those are my goals, and, um, you know, talking about staying organized and staying focused and figuring out what you need to do to help your business grow, especially, like I said, now that I'm doing this full time, um, I have to kind of push myself to have some goals, you know, because you don't want to just be going day to day, not really sure what you want to do, but... I have to make sure that I don't let those goals, um, you know, suck the creativity out of me or make me feel um, like if I don't reach them that, um, that that's a negative thing. You know, it's okay for you to, um, you know, audible or pivot, you know, if you need to. And uh, I think we all struggle with, you know, wanting to be the best that we can be and you know, always be doing new things, and sometimes you just have to sit back and know that it's okay, uh, and I struggle because I can be a perfectionist, and, uh, you know, I want to have the lists, and I want to have the schedules, and I want to have the goals, but um, it can't be a detriment to, you know, it can't run you ragged, and it can't leave you so tired that you can't do stuff like this, you know, um, like, uh, yesterday I had a really rough time with my website. I was trying to update it um, for the DIY hook challenge and get a gallery of all of the hooks up. And um, my website just wasn't updating and I'm not really a website person. Um, I just got this new website this year and uh, I got so frustrated and it put me in a funk. Like my whole personality just went in the garbage. <laughs> and you know, dinner wasn't working out as planned so it's like all those little things build up and it just makes you feel like crap, you know? And then you feel like your whole day got ruined even though it was a good day, you know, it had a great day. Um, and so it's slowing down and breathing and thank God the captain deals with my craziness in those moments. Um, but I just have to remind myself to, you know, it, it's okay, things aren't always gonna be perfect, they're not always gonna work out perfectly, but you can step away. Um, you know, I think I've heard a lot of creators say things like, you know, you're not Amazon. Um, you're If you're one person running your business, you can't be expected to respond to every single message immediately. Um, 
you know, it's okay for you to say, no, I need, I need like a day. I need a day just to just not answer messages and not deal with social media and not deal with my shop orders, you know, just a day to breathe and like recollect everything. And then the next day you get back on it, you know? Um, but I hope this is helpful, you know, and, and you guys, um, enjoy these chats. You know, like I said, this is, it's nice for me to just check in with you guys and let you know what's going on and what's new. And, um, I think I'm probably at my, my mark now. Yeah. So I try not to go over an hour. Um, I do repost these on, uh, Instagram and on, um, YouTube. Uh, so if you're watching the replay, thanks. Uh, but I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. Um, I have plenty to work on. I'm excited to share some of these new designs with you guys once I really start getting them going. Um, Amy, I've been there too. I try to keep that in mind. Got to keep it in perspective. Mental health is so important. Yes, it is. Um, you know, I know for me, uh, with Pink Sheep, my goal has always been to focus more on you guys, uh, the people that support us and, um, you know, make sure that if you have questions that they get answered and that if you have, you know, things going on. Um, I know I see the captain up there. Hey, see you. I'm sure he is. He's sick. He's sick. His stomach was rumbling. Our puppy's not feeling good. Um, but yes, you have to take care of yourself and you can't overrun yourself and all that. So keep that in mind this weekend. Uh, and I'll be sharing more stuff with you guys. Join us live on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. I am going to put a link in my bio and I'll post about it. Um, but we're going to be on YouTube and we're going to do our closing ceremony for the DIY hook challenge. So we're really excited. You can see all of those pictures um, of the hooks that were entered uh, at therealpinksheepdesign.com. And then you go to the crochet hooks drop down, choose DIY hook challenge. Um, you can see all those photos of the crazy cool hooks that were submitted, which is awesome. Um, and I think that's it for now. So, um, I'll be checking in with you guys again soon. Uh, oh, and my tip Tuesdays, uh, if you didn't know, they have been moved to YouTube as well. So next Tuesday, I'll be going live on YouTube at 12 o'clock Eastern time. I usually, I'll come on here first and remind everybody to meet me over there, but, um, we'll chat over on YouTube on Tuesday. So I will talk to you guys soon. Have an amazing weekend.